have executive session. No votes were taken in executive session. Uh, Jerry, do you want to add anything? Yeah, I, I, I will just say that the executive session consisted of a discussion about MDM Golf LLC and the amount of money that company owes the town as a result of the operation of the Country Club of Woodbridge for the past, for the last year, last season. And there's an amount of $150,000 that the town believes is owed under the contract. <clears throat> the town, uh, the first selectman, Tony Genovese, attorney Perito, <clears throat> who's representing the town uh, in this matter uh, in order to try and collect the money that's owed. And I attended several s settlement discussions with uh, uh, representatives of MDM and MDM's attorney. Um, we have been doing this for several months now. We have meetings, and MDM has indicated that they feel they have a defense to some of the money that is owed. And we've asked them for specifics on the defense. And our attorney has been trying to get information for months and months and months through emails and telephone calls. And to this date, we have received nothing in support of the defense that MDM does not owe the full $150,000 to the town. I talked to attorney Perito, and he feels that we've reached an impasse in the settlement negotiations, that we can't get this information, and there has not been a realistic offer made to the town to resolve this matter. So I'm just bringing it up uh, to the Board of Selectmen, and that's the status of this, of the litigation and the lawsuit and the, uh, the matter involving MDM Gap So I would entertain a motion to authorize me to retain litigation counsel or trial counsel to proceed against MDM Golf for the monies owed to the town of Woodbridge. So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes unanimously. Okay. Next item on the agenda is receipt of the town clerk's report. And I'd entertain a motion to acknowledge receipt of that report. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes unanimously. Next is the, our minutes, the first of which is the minutes for the special meeting of the Board of Selectmen on November 1, 2011. And I entertain a motion to approve those minutes. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. Next are the, our minutes of our regular meeting on February 8, 2012. And I entertain a motion to approve those minutes. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. Next is the first selectman's report. The first item under that uh, on the agenda under the report is the Route 1559 deficiencies and needs study. There was a March 23, 2012 meeting here at the town hall, attended by a number of officials of Woodbridge and New Haven including our chief of police, representatives of the fire department, uh, public works, et cetera. Uh, th this study has been ongoing, and uh, there are four uh, suggestions in the study. I think you have a handout on this. Uh, none of these studies uh, have uh, assessed how, what the impact of these proposed changes would be on reduction of traffic and congestion. That's the next step they have to go to. I think that the study that, that seems to have the broadest, the proposal has the broadest Im impact would be a connector road between Litchfield Turnpike and Amity Road, right at the exit ramps from uh, Route 15 going uh, south, and then a reconstruction of those uh, entrance and exit ramps. Um, I, th I think that's probably the one that, that they seem to have the most interest in. <coughs> but in any event, they're going to fine tune these recommendations, come back with a final recommendation, they say in December, I suggested, couldn't they move that up until September? They're going to try to do that, and then they'll have, they'll air that recommendation, and I'm sure we'll have them come to the Board of Selectmen to talk about it. Uh, but that's basically it in a nutshell. You have this handout that shows some of these other suggestions. The graphics are not that great on these, so it's so a little hard to see, but that's that's basically what I what I got out of, out of that meeting. Uh, the next, I don't know if anyone has any questions or not. This, this is being done by a consulting group that's been hired by the DOT. 
Ed, um, any update on the block the box? Not that this has to do with that, but uh, yes, the uh, but contract. I think the bids have gone out for that. Is that yep. right? Yep. Bids yeah, are going out for the due in a couple weeks. Right. And they'll be available at your next meeting for your right. approval. Okay. That's good. I was going to ask about that. Yeah. yeah. Beecher Road, Beecher Road. I think they're going to hold off on because the gas line might go down there. So uh, that may not be done until that's resolved. If I yeah. Can. Well, I think they may. Yeah. We'll see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. The next item is the Economic Development Commission. They're going to have an outreach breakfast on. April 26th, which is a Thursday at 7.30 a.m. at Scoop This. And they're going to invite all the, all the uh, business located in Woodbridge, in the, in the <coughs> commercial area. And Professor Plattis will be making his report there. And there will also be discussions about the website, I believe, as well. Right. And uh, also uh, the, the uh, Professor Plattis's report. So you guys are all invited to that mm -hmm. if you wish to attend. Uh, the next item is uh, options for long-term use of the Country Club of Woodbridge. And uh, Tony, we've come up with uh, six potential options which we can circulate, and there may be more, and they can be. But this is just the starting point for our discussion here. We can take it up tonight, and we can show you. You know, follow up with this uh, at subsequent meetings. And uh, why don't you all take a minute or so to read that over? Does everyone have a chance to read that? Okay. So just sort of to give it just an overview of what these potential options are, one, the first of which would be to sell the entire facility with a conservation easement. Uh, the second would be to sell the entire facility with a partial conservation easement, retaining a certain number of acres for development and the rest to be used to, subject to the conservation easement. The third would be that the town would operate the facility with a uh, golf manager, and that's pre at presently what we're doing uh, with Billy Casper Golf. The fourth would be the town leases the facility to a third party, and that's what we basically we did with the uh, Manchetti, uh, with MDM Golf, and uh, as you may recall, we issued an RFP for this option in 2009, and we received only one proposal. The fifth option would be limited development on, say, 17 acres, uh, similar to what was proposed earlier about Toll Brothers. Uh, and the sixth would be a sale of all or portion of the facility for development, with the remainder uh, uh, being uh, having a conservation restriction. And one, one of the suggestions could be there that the golf course be reduced to a nine-hole course and the rest of it uh, be uh, uh, developed or subject to a conservation easement. So those are just some initial discussion points to, to start the, this discussion. Um, I think we ought, to, we ought to think about it, how we want to proceed to get a, a community discussion about this, how we want to proceed. Some of you may have other suggestions or modifications of these as possible options. And um, Would uh, developing some single-family homes 
fall under number two. You know, a, a large portion of it is conserved and it could, uh, yes. 15 homes, 20, whatever it is. That could be. Is that? Yeah, these are all, you know, subject to modification and. Uh, well, I think it's a good conversation and I'm glad we've started it. I think now that, uh, you know, we've got Billy Casper in, in place. We need to, like you said, have a public discussion about this and we need to find out what the townspeople want to do. And I think beyond just discussing these, these six topics, I think <coughs> we need to uh, put together some type of a public hearing, whether it's a panel or it's a committee or whatever it happens to be, where we get the uh, input from the town, from the different commissions, and find out exactly where it is we want to go. I mean, I'd like to see something uh, at least put together over the next couple of months, and I'd also like to get this moved up to the top of the agenda at possibly the next meeting or the meeting after, because I think at some point uh, we don't meet in the summer, right? We don't meet in August, is that? Yeah, we do. Well, we, we have been, we but this. there have been Augusts we haven't, but recently I think we have been. So I, I like to see us at least try to get something put together, and, and we can discuss how we do that, or, or you know, what that type of a panel consists of. Mm -hmm. But I really want to know what the town thinks about this. I mean, I've heard lots of different things from lots of different people, and clearly the town came out in favor of purchasing the property, and we did that. And uh, now we've got Billy Casper for three years, so I think. Within a year or so, I think we should have some type of direction as to what we want to do. Whether we want to continue with this three-year deal with Billy Casper, continue it for another three to five years. However, it, we, uh, we we find that the uh, the will of the town is. But you know, I think it's also important that are, are we going to have the capital expenditure uh, put together for the town meeting? Can we meet on that because um, I think that's going to be an important discussion that we have because I think. People need to understand how much is this going to cost us long term. Right. And if that means that we want to continue to operate as a golf course, do we want to consider tearing down the entire country club? Because it would be cheaper to tear it down than it would be to fix it. Or do we want to spend the it money? Sort of to depends. Fix it? The cap of the capital plan for the facility depends on what you direction you want to go. Right. right exactly. And so I, it's hard to do a capital plan without if, you providing the direction. Right. But if we want, if we decide that. Uh, we're going to put together some type of a capital <coughs> plan for the next year. I, right? can, I can tell you that in the next year, there are no major capital items being discussed. The idea discussed. is not to spend any money. And Casper said they can operate the club in the next year without doing any We're going to have to have some, some maintenance on that building. The, no, not, not, we're going to mothball the building. And it, it we're going to mothball. We still have to, still have to heat it. Oh well, just we still the, have to, you know, take care of. But that's not a capital. But those there's aren't capital. Costs. That's operating right, but operating is not costs, right? But well, there's operating unless costs. something happens, unless yeah, the air handling unit goes or the boiler goes or something like that. I mean, we need to at least be prepared because I think part of the reason we don't want to have Billy Casper go in and start moving <coughs> out of the restaurant and, right. and doing that is because we're afraid that something's going to go. Oh yeah. And I think that's something that we need to be. Can I respond to that? I, I don't put on devil's advocate here for a minute because I thought you sent out a very thoughtful email on this topic the other day about trying to promote this discussion. And, you know, we now have these possible uh, sort of points of discussion that um, Ed has submitted. But one of the things that I think is fascinating about this process right now is we're really collecting data. I mean, we're finding out what the possibilities are. And I think given that this is even somewhat a short season, I'm not sure you can even judge it based on just this one year. You, you might want to see what two years looks like. Because what I don't want to do is start having engaging a broader public kind of discussion without really knowing what the possibilities are at this golf course. And I don't think we're going to know it in September. Um, I don't think we're going to know it. No, no, I'm saying I'm not saying that I want I want decisions made by. No, I understand that, but let me just finish my thought. Okay. B because one of the pieces that that they that keeps getting emphasized over and over again it, are the money making possibilities, the revenue enhancements, 
of let's say running large outings and things like that and we know that in a short season that's not going to happen next year you're going to have a full run and if the ex it, to the extent that we're sort of in a position now where we're we've got some traction and we're collecting data I want to make sure that the public discussion which I agree with you is extremely valuable on this we need that direction but I want to make sure that the public discussion is well informed well, I don't understand what you mean by short season in other words they didn't get they started in March and they're 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 beginning they're having to build up their infrastructure it's not like they were marketing back in January and sort of knowing what 12 months of, of running this operation is. They will be able to start marketing next year, like in September, for the following year. Right. For the following year. Yeah. Right. So, so, so there's a cycle. You know, we've missed out on half of the cycle already in the sense of marketing. I mean, you know, I, I don't know what that's going to look like from a data point of view at the end of the summer. But I think um, the, the revenue side of this I think should be just as valuable to us from an information point of view as the cost side. Oh, sure. And, we, and we, we can talk about the cost side, but I'm not sure we can talk about the revenue side meaningfully. Yeah. Right, right. Uh, let me just, uh, to add to this, uh, about a week or so ago, uh, Tony, myself, Andy Esposito, and Dee Kotchkis met with representatives of the University of New Haven who have expressed an initial interest in, in what this country club could their interest would be either from their, they have a school of hospitality, hospitality and right. the culinary arts, cu I think. Culinary right. arts, whether they would be interested in assuming the operation of the restaurant there or having some educational aspect of the University of New Haven there. And so we just talked about these in broad generalities and we met with the executive vice president of the University of New Haven and uh, two other people from the faculty members. And so they're gonna get back to us that we gave them a tour of the facility, they know exactly <coughs> what the condition of the building is and is in need of improvements. And they're gonna get back to us, they said, with some discussion points to further that discussion. Mm -hmm. So that's something right. that may or may not happen, I'm not saying well, it's going to be. We'd, st we'd so still have to invest in <coughs> fixing it up. So well, the, you know, they, the, well, the idea here from our standpoint was that we're looking for someone to invest in that to fix it up and then to have a maybe you know a lease with us or something like that that would be favorable for I mean, that. there's some creative things but there, yeah. I'm just saying that that's another aspect of this uh, and this so you know as we go just, along I, so and I don't disagree with this is I just think that I think we need to get the public dialogue going and I think we need to at least put something out there maybe we maybe maybe we set up a some type of a uh, town meeting to just discuss this is where we are and this is what we're thinking about doing. You know, getting input from the town as to what they want to do. I'll tell you right now that people are very, uh, they have very set ideas about whether we should be in it or not in it. And whether, you know, hindsight, of course, 2020, but, you know, I, Everybody that I talk to has, seems to have a different idea about what we should be doing with the property, and you know I I agree and I, I I voted for the budget. I think we need to move on. I think we need to start getting this up and going. We need to give them the support to make it work. But at the same time, there are a lot of people out there that don't think we should be doing this at all, and there are a lot of other people yeah. out there that think we should possibly think about developing it. But I don't want to wait a year and a half. I don't want to wait two years to start to get people involved. To figure out what it is they want to do, because yeah, then but how it, can you know what you want to do if you don't have basic information? Well, I think there are people out there that don't want to be in it at all, and they think that we okay. should. So, so, so people with set ideas, you're not going to influence them with the information, no matter right, what. But I still don't think we should sit back and wait, and that's my concern: is that it looks like we're sitting back yeah. and waiting. Yeah, I, I, I don't know if waiting is. Uh, yeah, I, I'm con I'm just concerned about the timing. Not not that waiting is good or or bad. But that we do it thoughtfully so that we have um, real data to share. And I think if we, I think if we just, you know, kind of go out there loosey goosey, what, what it, the, we're not going to formulate interesting ideas. One of the thoughts I had is that we have a, a joint meeting with the Conservation Commission, the Publicly Owned Properties Committee, Commission. 
So we begin to and have a discussion with them use among, agencies first. Right? Yeah, what they yeah, think. That's, that's, that's a good idea. idea. I think that's very See if we can sort of crystallize what we're what that's we, a good idea. All right, then. That's a beginning. Then we start there. But right. I think we need to start. Okay. I don't think I agree with that. Yeah, yeah, that's Susan, okay. I, I think that you're you know, right in the sense that if we fast forward a year and a half or two years <clears throat> or three, um, whatever happens in between, that's my concern. I I know we'll we'll have a lot more information at that point. I'm just really concerned about it like it's it would be one thing if this if the club and the facilities and everything was really in good shape, so it was just a matter of they got a late start in the season. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But it's not. It's the the infrastructure is really, really in bad shape. The clubhouse, you know, the course needs work. So I just, I, I feel like. I don't think that's right. No, it's, it's not right. The course doesn't need work. The, the, the course, course isn't, right. from what we're hearing, the course is in very good shape. Well, Th let's that's just, what told let's, yeah. let's, let's stick with the clubhouse for a minute. Right. The thing is a disaster. It looks horrible, inside and out. And mm. I just think that issue. that operation is, like, they're hamstrung a little bit because there's only so much you can do. And, and so it's not really like a clean start for them. It's like a late season and... They got a lot of obstacles they have to overcome. Yeah, but how interesting would it be to find out you can make money even with a disaster of a clubhouse and a late start? I mean, I think that's valuable information. I do think Ed's absolutely right. Getting the land use agencies mm -hmm. involved is, you know, it's it's exactly what Tom is saying. Um, and finding out, have that dialogue start, and then we build on that. I think that's a very good way to go. I would I'm just that. concerned about the capital. I'm, I'm not advocating that we wait for years that at all. It's just so, you know, it just seems like it's looming, and I just, you know. How's it looming? It's sitting there. Well, that's pretty well, we're going to find out if it just stops working this season. <laughs> but we're not, we're not using, we're using it, though. We, well, right. what we're talking about using the, the kitchen, the kitchen we're, now. We're using an isolated part of it. They talked about using the bar today. And right. Right. But it's, as, well, we're, but that's we're the doing that with part. no capital investment mm -hmm. in that, and, and should that happen, should that uh, be a problem we walk away. Of, of the operational, so. that we just close it down right. because they're going to have a tent in any of them. We already put a roof on that part of the building, so the roof is okay. Public Works said that the air conditioning is sufficient to handle that little section. If you wall off, could air conditioning go to the seat? Absolutely, but it could mm. go here. It could go any place. It's more likely there, obviously. It's lousy equipment. It's old equipment. Right, but that's what we bought. Nice. We're not really arguing. So about I think anything. I think I think we're, we're all saying the same right, thing. Right, exactly. yeah. Tom, yeah. as you suggest, we should get the discussion going. Yeah. And so, so try to proceed in sort of an orderly fashion. Get the other, you know, representatives of our community who are involved in land use management, mm -hmm. if you will, see what they think about it. And, uh, and then see if we can come up with some kind of guidelines how we want to proceed as, as, a, as a board of selectmen. Mm -hmm. and, and then have a, you know, a public discussion about it. I think if we go in front of the public, we, we do have to have choices that are, that, that are somewhat deep and laid out a little bit. I, and I we're know, not there yet. Do you know what right. I mean? Like, right. I, I do know what you mean. I don't think you can go in front of the public and make them come out and then not have you know a couple ideas that this is what it's going to mean for tax revenue. You're gonna you have to right. make some estimations. You have to know what stuff. you're talking about. So we're going to have to make some estimations on, you know, if <clears throat> we run it as we're running it right now. We're just going to have to make some projections on this is going to need to be spent on capital improvements and that type of thing. You know, under the I'm just curious on the one that says town lease facility third party. Um, do you think that would uh, assume that the third party is the third party paying for a well, that's what we did that's what we did with manchetti they, yeah. they took all the risk yeah no i know but uh, right but yeah, like, like what if yeah, the sprinkler right. system goes and what if the marines get wiped yeah. out by <laughs> fungus under 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 the uh long-term um proposals for a third party lease um some of the pro if you look at his proposals some of those included him taking all that risk Right. I, the only reason I mention that is that I feel like that's what the taxpayers and the residents need to understand if they want to do that type of arrangement. 
Like there's there is risks to everything, and you know if the greens got wiped out, like I've heard they did at New Haven Country Club, but we've heard they that did. before a bunch they of did. times. They did. And I've heard about this irrigation or sprinkler system that is a really big ticket item that I don't know, you know, what's going to make it go, but people have said uh, it's a very expensive thing. I feel like people need to really understand that because I don't know. So, for instance, th there are there apparently are uh, entities or people who like to buy golf courses who people who are independently wealthy. And uh, you know, if we were to sell it to such, such a person, uh, one of the things that would be helpful to know is what can this generate. And that is what Susan's getting at as, as an as a golf course. And so that is going to have an effect on the value of what we sell. If it's successful, the value is going to increase. Just keep in mind, we bought this country club based on what the uh, what the indebtedness of the of the Woodbridge Country Club was. So we probably paid more than what it was actually worth, mm -hmm. but that's how we got it. That's how we kept it to be open space. And so there's a premium for that. So we may decide to sell it and we may not get what we paid for it, but we'll get a sufficient amount. So the balance that we don't get, we write off as open spaces. That's a commitment to open space. And that clearly was the intent when, back in 2009 when this purchase was, uh, was made. So uh, I think that the townspeople spoke at that time, and that's what we're bound by, is uh, that this was a, 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 an appropriate expenditure of monies for open space. The difference between this open space and the other open space we have in town is this can produce an income stream. And we'll, we'll see that. And, and for the two and a half years, it did produce an income it stream. It did, yep. So we're, we're, we were about 125,000 ahead of the game. Yeah, right? and it paid all the um, all the interest right. that we had accrued mm -hmm. during so that time. So an idea of what this can generate. Right, well, and some people are telling us it can generate even more. I mean, that's what our well, consultant yeah, but, but, but he was only us. paying right. us what he owed us. Right, but we we're going to get it all. Right, right. but and, we do I mean, have they an were idea. Expenses, like but you had said that you mean we we want to go. Well, that was under a different arrangement, though. Absolutely. That was under a different but, arrangement, and that makes a difference. Still, but we right. can still look at that and say, all right, this is, no, you look this at is what we, this is the, this, these are the amount of rounds we played, this is the amount of revenue that we brought in, this is what, you know, it looked like. But he also had the restaurant going at the same time. Well, but he wasn't paying us on the basis of revenue. He was paying right, us we have an idea, though. Tom, I don't think we ever got a real accurate anything from him in terms of what, what he was rounds or anything. I, maybe I'm wrong. Well, I, mean, it's, it's I don't think we have accurate numbers from him. I asked Casper whether they would want to do a lease and they said they would consider a lease if they had some numbers that they were comfortable with yeah. on a track record. Mm -hmm. The reason we didn't get anybody wanting to do a lease is because we had really no reliable right. information. Right. But you can generate a million bucks. Right. Somebody would take a risk on that. But Correct. we really didn't right. have much. Yeah. Keep in mind, our, our information was very sketchy. Yep. We don't have a lot of information, a lot of history. But Tom, you're, I think you're right about one thing, and that is, just one we, <laughs> <laughs> we as a town have to decide if we want to accept some of the risk in order to get some of the upside, or if we want to be risk-free and not have any of the upside, if we're going to operate it as a golf course. I mean, separate from the idea of possibly selling it altogether, but to the extent that we operate it, you know, if that's the choice, you're right. That that's the tension that we're going to have to figure out. Right now, I just don't want to pay anything, and we need to figure out how we can do that right. and service the debt. But at some point, we need to figure out what we really want to do with that property. Whether we want to yeah. run it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Whether we want to, and, and, and I've heard that it would cost less to level the building and put down a slab and put up one of those nice tents that Billy Casper was talking about that's air conditioned and is sturdy. It's not just a tent. Well at and the golf at the golf commission meeting the other day, somebody mentioned I can't remember who it was now, that the cost of raising the building, of demolishing it, could be a half a million dollars. Exactly or less. Or as much as. I mean that's not nothing either. It's a lot of it's money. It's not nothing, but it's a lot less than it would be to fix the place up. That may be. Yeah, but, oh, that may be. By half. But, but, but the point is, then you have a building. But, but getting rid of the building is not neutral either, is my point. No, it's not. No, you're and right. You don't have a building. 
And then you're <laughs> the building. It costs twice, right. but you have a building. Right. <laughs> you go to, to Oxford Greens, which is right. which is also run by right. Billy Casper Golf, and they don't have a huge. What is it? Correct. Thirty-five thousand. What? Thirty-five hundred. Thirty. Five hundred square foot clubhouse. Yeah. yeah, that's they what they have. have this huge clubhouse. Yeah, if you were going to build it today, you wouldn't build that. They've got a small clubhouse. They've got a small changing room, right. and they've got a bar where right. they have barbecue. There's no question. Absolutely. It's obsolete. I'm and, not arguing. And it's a golf right. course. It's not a pool and tennis and golf with a right. huge million dollar locker room. Right. So if you want something to work, it doesn't necessarily have to be that. I don't disagree with that. If you decide we want to be there long term, right. it may be more cost effective to raise the bill. That's right. And the that's number right. of people you suggested right. that, and that's a and keep the keep the pro shop consider. and maybe add on a little bit to the pro shop, and then you might be exactly right. Build a small small building that has golf club storage, a couple locker room, couple lockers, and you know shower and, and a little place to eat. Yeah. No. And and because people get done golfing, they right. want to get something to eat, have a drink, and then go home. Right. And then watch right now we can't do that. <laughs> well, you will be able to do that shortly. Next week. Next week. You play golf, Tom? Or? I have clubs. That's more than I have. That's more than I have. Well, it's a very nice <laughs> locker room you can lock them up in right after. Right. And, uh, <laughs> give you a golf cart, too. Mm -hmm. And do, do we think we're going to try and run this as like an offshoot of, of uh, BOS or recreation? Do we want to form a committee? I mean, there's, there's a golf commission. Yeah. Well, the golf commission's charge is part of their charge. Run a country club, period. And I don't think it's. No, I don't think that's true. I think you like said that. consider well, options. I, I think. It no, would. well, we had this conversation, and I said that I wanted them to consider long-term use of the club, and I was told it's not part of their charge. I don't think it is part and of their charge. Need to go back I'd have to go back and look. We have to look. Yeah. Yeah. I suggested I that, and I was. I think initially it, it's probably good for all of us to come up. <clears throat> to speed on all the options, see if there's a consensus among us, getting advice from the land use agencies mm -hmm. and from Billy Casper as well as our consultant, <coughs> what they think about the operation, <coughs> and then decide, you know, what, how we should proceed from there. Because then we diffuse it if we do it. I think, I mean, this kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can call in people to come and talk to us about it. But, you know, I'm, I'm open to suggest. But I just think initially it would be easier to do it. So, yeah. so can we at least <coughs> try to set up a meeting with uh, land use agencies within the next month or so? Sure. Get their input? They perhaps have to meet ahead of time, come to consensus. Because you well, don't I, want... I would think... And then, you know, well, I think it's going to be information. Yeah, information. Oh, okay. Okay. Right. Well, you're not asking for their recommendations. <coughs> You're just asking for a get together. Yeah, just yeah. say, okay. set it in meeting up for a month, a month and a half from now, and okay. then they've got all that time to right. think about what they want to, you know, with that. ideas. Okay. And I'm right. sure they won't come in with no ideas. I think that's a good I agree policy. with you. We can circulate these, you know, potential yep. options. Yep. And yep. We invite them to add we'll others. Right. Right. And just right. say we're going to have like yeah. a tri board meeting or yep. committee right. or whatever it happens to be. In. Mm -hmm. If it's Coupop, if it's uh, conservation, if it's who else? Well, it'd be nice to have it Recreation, there. Mm -hmm. Recreation, rec in there. Mm -hmm. We should have it there so that and people can there. take a tour and the whole thing. So so first, have dinner, have dinner. Have well, I'm, I, I'm not going that I mean, but you know, have it <laughs> so there so people can see it. Have it, there in it the is a good idea, yeah. Mm -hmm. In the yeah. dining room. Okay. Yeah. 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 Mark? That's, that's a start. Okay. That's a good start. Okay. Um, Bethany just is doing this like long term plan. I don't know if you've seen that. I've read about the paper. So they're trying to undertake, I don't know everything about it, but they're trying to do like a five-year... You mean like a strategic plan? Uh -huh. Exactly. Right. And so they put together a little commission, so it's somewhat interesting. They they are they're putting together a survey, and it's not out just yet. I think it's going to be out any day. So their residents are going to be able to stop by, probably town hall, fill out a survey, you could fill one out, probably a line. It's just another means to get resident input. I think that's not a bad idea once we get farther down the road. Okay. Good idea. Survey monkey. Is mm -hmm. the exactly. is that what they're using? No, I think they you know uh, okay. they just developed. I think it's easier, <laughs> simpler than that. Yeah, but that's not mm -hmm. a bad idea. You just exhausted my knowledge on survey monkey by the way. Okay. Um, so I just I'm just going to finish my report with uh, just to mention that uh, Mac Baldwin died.
Uh, and he's been a friend and neighbor of mine since Ellie and I moved to Woodbridge in 1975. He comes, he's a 10th generation of Baldwins to live in Woodbridge. And uh, they've contributed a lot. They've more or less founded the community and over the years contributed a lot to the town of Woodbridge. His father was the first selectman and was responsible for the zoning that we presently have in Woodbridge that makes Woodbridge a little bit different than other communities. He was 85 years old, a 63 year old, 63 year member of the Woodbridge Fire Department. That's correct. He was a member of the Police and Fire Commission. He, he himself was deeply committed to Woodbridge. I know he's a great friend of Joe Hellhauer's and I know we'll all miss him. And, uh, so he's, uh, so that's all I'll say. And Can then, you mention about uh, Oh, I'm sorry, was, Eddie, okay. uh, <laughs> Why don't you say? Oh, um, I was at the Baldwin's house this afternoon, and um, his wife and uh, daughter Cindy requested, and I guess this is for TV land, that anyone mis uh, wishing to make a donation should send it to the Woodbridge Volunteer Fire Association. Oh, very nice. very nice. And she forgot to put that in the paper or yes. whatever, so okay. just for those that want to give something. It has been okay, Joe, you have I've got two things to just thank you. Uh, first thing is Memorial Day is coming up very soon. It is Monday, the 28th of May. We will have our annual Memorial Day service honoring our deceased veterans and the history of what Memorial Day is. It will be 11 a.m. on Monday. Uh, we think that the Beecher Choir is going to be with us. Uh, the Reverend uh, uh, Sarah. Sarah has accepted the clergy person's responsibilities for helping us and I'll be chairing that one and I just mention it now because yes it's five or six weeks away but five or six weeks around here goes very very fast. The one that is more time sensitive in your packets you have something that says Civil War commemoration and I want to brief you on that. This is sponsored by both the Town of Woodbridge and the Amity and Woodbridge Historical Societies. It is going to be held, there's no rain day, it's going to be held on Sunday, September the 23rd at high noon. There will be a parade from Amity High School to the town gazebo via Newton Road and our main drag here in front of the meeting house and then up there. Uh, Ms. Dr. Ahrens is the chairman, he's our town historian among other things. Dr. Ahrens and I are going to meet with people representing Company G of the 14th Regiment of the Connecticut Volunteer Infantry, I think that's about 20 people, and also the uh, Connecticut Blues Fife and Drum Corps. And Dr. Ernst and I will be meeting with them Saturday morning in New Britain. Uh, we will have the Gettysburg Address and the Emancipation Proclamation. Uh, town officials and students, we will have five men on the podium who will be dressed in 1862 garb. Mr. Sheehy will be one of those five. Don Menzies is the master of ceremonies. He's the president of the uh, Historical Society. We have new bunting on order, which we have it's in my office right now. We will be putting bunting on the town hall, the gazebo, <coughs> the door in front of the original schoolhouse, and the old firehouse so that before the bunting things. It's going to be a, a, a pretty big thing and it needs all the press coverage we can get. Unfortunately, we're going to lose one of our weekly papers, so we're not going to be able to use that. So I'll keep you posted on it, but it, it's, there's a lot of work to it, but there's, it's coming along quite well. And we hope to have Abraham Lincoln be a young male individual at Amity High School, preferably a Woodbridge lad, and he will be garbed and have a beard and a top. And I'm going to send you that link. I mean, women at Gettysburg. That's the that I found. There's a whole I, website for you, Joe. Susan, I'm having just so much fun on this committee, I could do with you whatever you want to send me. He's fine. riveted with excitement. That's it, Mr. Sheehy. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay. Only Great. I would find a website for women at Gettysburg. Um, let's see, just a little update on Beecher Building Committee. We've been meeting every Friday for a long time now. And, um, we're getting very close um, to having recommendations. Maybe this Friday we'll be, have something official. But our game plan over there, it, um, just to give you a quick preview, is you know, we're really trying to address the envelope of the building first. So um, there's some roof 
you know, that is in need of repair over there. Um, there's a lot of those that have been in their window curtain walls, and they're, you know, they just like leak heat. Um, they're really inefficient. Um, so we're trying to address, you know, the walls and the roof and make the building much more efficient. They, they did a thermal scan, and it just showed, you know, really the the, the heat um, is, is pouring out of there. And uh, so that's what we are focused on. We're focused on trying to accomplish um, this in phases so that we can do maybe three phases of work um, so as to not have a really large you know, price tag, um, but get that building so that we can get another couple decades out of it and make it much more efficient with the systems we're going to put in it. Um, so we're continuing to do hard work on that. Um, let's see, on my uh, land use agencies, um, I, I don't have a f thorough update, um, but everyone may know that on mon Monday, last week, um, and Susan was there, the, the uh, TPZ met, um, and uh, so a lot of people showed up here to um, speak at public comment about the proposed gun shop that is uh, potentially going to be down in uh, Selden Plaza. So the majority of people spoke against it, and TPZ has referred a couple questions to Jerry. Um, but other than that, it's uh, uh, an ongoing uh, application change of use. And uh, today I actually attended uh, here at 4 o'clock the uh, West River Restoration Flood Mitigation Committee. So I attended a few of these meetings, so I just want to give you a, an update on that. They're, they're at like a 65% completion in terms of the engineering of, of taking down the engineering part of it. Of taking down, you know, the dam um, behind Walgreens, mm -hmm. Pond, Lily, yeah. Pond Lily Dam. So <clears throat> I don't know if anyone's ever seen that, but it's uh, oh yeah, it's worth a look. I went down there. There's a fish ladder. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So the dam is there's some <coughs> that, that dam that, that it potentially could breach uh, in in a bad winter or something. It is leaking. Uh, the berm is sort of leaking out, and so that's been a long ongoing project. But it's seems to be, uh, they believe they might be at like 100% completion of the engineering by September. And then there's the actual removal, which is going to be at least a couple hundred thousand dollars. But there's Connecticut Fund for Envir and Environment is this organization that's been applying for a lot of grants. Um, they're going for two more grants to try and basically find a lot of money to pay for this. So. Um, and the Merritt Avenue Bridge, I think, is right around the same. 60% design. It's about 60%. Design, yeah. so that's making progress too. So uh, I have nothing else to report. Okay, thanks, Greg. Okay, yeah, Warren. <coughs> so we heard uh, earlier this month from Dr. Stella about developments at Beach Road School. Uh, main main issues uh, cons uh, considered by the Board of Education the last time were the uh, the north driveway improvements, we all saw the map in the presentation. They're hoping to go ahead with that this summer, um, um, as you heard. Um, the playground construction was a, um, a community event and um, very successful by all measures, as I, uh, as I know you know, you heard it earlier. And then the third big thing that they have going is the principal search. Um, the Board of Education has retained a, uh, a search firm to help with that. And again, as we heard, Dr. Stella is hoping to narrow, narrow the field to make recommendations to the Board of Education uh, shortly. They hope to have someone in place by the beginning of the summer so that um, so the parents <coughs> for the next school year uh, will include this new administrative team. Uh, at the Recreation Commission, uh, uh, really two main items. Uh, commissioners maintained their concern about uh, uh, playing conditions on the playing fields without all the tools available to us uh, in terms of uh, uh, 
pest control and weed uh, management. And um, they held up uh, as an example, or, or as exhibit A, you might say, uh, the condition of the Beecher Road School fields, which are um, wanting, I guess, in, in terms of uh, turf quality and um, and certainly uh, we hear about the erosion problems of Beecher Road School. They are concerned about the rest of the fields, <coughs> uh, given the new policy to uh, to prohibit all the tools available. So anyway, um, commissioners maintain their concern about that, and um, and then we each we took a tour. We we split by gender and took tours of the locker rooms used by all those who use the Beecher Road <coughs> School pool, and. Um, and so there, there was a general discussion about what might, what might be done to um, improve conditions in those locker rooms. Uh, some of the doors have been removed. Uh, some of the lockers, some of the remaining lockers, uh, still have a, a great deal of rust and uh, deterioration. We also went back down, went onto the pool deck and saw some um, uh, tile damage. And anyways, it was just sort of an overview of. Of uh, what's needed at the Beach Road School Pool. For general discussion, no action was taken on that. That's it. Okay, Susan? I haven't quite figured out how to be in two places at one time, so I had two liaison meetings Monday, both at 6. Um, uh, I did not go to the library meeting, but I did speak to the chair and uh, got notes on the meeting, so I can report that the uh, at the library, the Friends of the Woodbridge Library annual meeting will be held on April 23rd at 7, and the annual appeal for that organization has been mailed out. Um, the, um, let me just get there. Oh, the library, the repairs are proceeding on, from the break-in uh, on the library, and I understand that there's been an arrest yes. in connection with that mm -hmm. break-in. Um, evidently, uh, Todd also announced that libraries participating in the Lion system uh, are going to be boycotting Random House hmm. um, because of because of to protest its new pricing practices in connection with ebooks. A little dissent on that one. Okay, um, nine staff members of the library are going to be going to the Connecticut State Library Association meetings in Groton. And um, Todd is also promoting, uh, he talked about the activities for National Volunteers Week in connection with individuals who volunteer at the library. Um, and the custodian, Tony Fordo, who works at the library, is going to be retiring June 1st. Mm -hmm. uh, the second meeting I went to was the, as liaison, was the Golf Commission uh, meeting on Monday night at 6 o'clock. And the main topic that was talked about there has been alluded to here a little bit tonight, and that has to do with the food and beverage um, uh, possibilities uh, short term for this summer. And the commission voted after a fairly lengthy discussion um, and a cliffhanger of a vote uh, to um, use a very isolated part of the building for food and beverage options and to also pursue creation of a tent, as you talked about earlier. And they have hired a cook, uh, a, a catering company, uh, and he's already gotten to work. So that's moving in that direction. Okay. Beth? Okay. I'll try to make it brief. I know it's so late. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, I went to Human Services on Monday, April 2nd. Um, the fire department on April 24th is going to give a program to the seniors at the, fi at the new firehouse on uh, fire safety and fire, fire, uh, fire prevention. Uh, Woodbridge seniors are going to be in a Wii tournament this month. Um, let's see, I can oh. skip all that. Um, that? Nine students were nominated for the First Selectman's Youth Award, which is, I guess, the most they've ever had for nominations. And this year's winner is Nicholas Santoro, um, who's the son of a former fire chief in, in Woodbridge. And um, based on his exemplary service as a volunteer to the Woodbridge Fire Department, he w was nominated by uh, Chief Rowland and also by me. Um, he, uh, First Niagara Bank is going to give him a $200 savings bank, uh, savings bond, and the annual volunteer tea is on Thursday, May 10th, and we are all invited. Um, May 10th? Hmm? May 10th. Tuesday, May 10th. Thursday, May Excuse 10th, me. yeah, sorry. 
Uh, I can skip all this stuff. It's so late. Um, the one interesting thing due to a change in a job description, the commission voted to change the job title of Youth Evening Program Coordinator to Youth Services Program Coordinator because this change ac accurately reflects the duties of this position. It's more than just Youth Evening Programs. And um, put this on your calendar now. On Wednesday, September 13th, uh, Human Services Planning, their major fundraiser, Razor this year, and um, it's going to be very exciting. I won't, I won't give you the details. I'll just leave you hanging. But it's going to be a lot of fun. So be sure to come. And the next meeting is on Monday, May seventh. Um, last night I went to the old firehouse restoration committee, and we discussed um, uh, phase two architects' bids, which we had um, taken the bid responses the meeting before, and a recommendation will be coming to the Board of Selectmen, I think, at April 25th meeting? Right. right. Yeah. So more to follow on that. The volunteers will be donating most of the labor for the construction, so it's, that's really great. Um, just a quick note that the Fire Safety and Prevention Day on Saturday, March 31st, at the firehouse was very well attended by, might have seen it in the New Haven Register, there was over okay. 500 people there. And it was done in memory of um, my friend Barbara Block's daughter, Eva, and um, they're hoping to make this an annual event so you can catch it next year. And I would strongly suggest we all tell you it was really well attended and very informational. Um, and let's see, Wednesday, April 4th, I was at the Board of Fire Commissioners meeting. And um, this is just all sort of stuff. Um, I'm trying to just hurry through this because it's so late. Um, most of the stuff was just budget, you know, general stuff that we get, we hear about. Um, Chief Roland updated the commission on the progress of the new shed garage, and the contract was waiting for us to approve the change orders, which we just did tonight, so that will proceed. Um, we talked about the fire prevention um, and upcoming events. I guess elections are April 24th for officers? The last Tuesday, the last Tuesday evening. Okay. Boy Scouts are selling flowers and fertilizer on the weekends. <coughs> uh, Bethwood Baseball opening is Saturday, April 28th, and we're all invited to that. Uh, bike Blessing is Sunday, April 29th, and May 1st is the installation dinner. And the next meeting is scheduled for May 21st. Okay, great. Okay, so on that note, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll move. All in favor? And we'll see you then on April 25th. That's six o'clock.